So our first speaker is uh, Celine Xu. She's a lead data scientist at uh, Axel Johansson, uh, and she will talk about the challenge of unbalanced data and recommendation systems. So Celine, please take over. Uh, thank you. I try to share my screen. Yes, and I will take five minutes on my watch. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, let's begin. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks, uh, Women in Data Scientist, for this opportunity. My name is Celine Xu. Uh, I work as a data scientist lead at X Johnson Group. You may be familiar with some of our group companies' brands, so, such as Allianz, Kicks, Hemshop. I sit in a team called X Insight at the group level, which aim to provide support across a, co a company uh, regarding advanced analytics and machine learning. In this presentation, our folks will be on one of the data gap challenge in applied machine learning, in particular, recommend system. So what is the recommend system? For me, in one sentence, recommend system is an automatic predictive scoring system for ranking each product to each customer based on historical record. It's just a ranking system. The algorithm or the group of algorithm used for recommend system are a little bit different from supervised learning or unsupervised learning. In this talk, we will focus on one of the most common used algorithm, item-based collaborative filtering based on cosine distance. If we ignore all the complex statistic functions and the weird terminologies here, one takeaway I hope everyone can have is the scoring ranking system highly affect by input data, even more sensitive to unbalanced data sample than normal supervised learning, such as churn models. So if we zoom out a little bit to see the bigger picture of data challenge in the recommend system, we can see unbalanced data is in the middle of it. Uh, and it will affect the machine's ability to answer two key questions here. Who we want to recommend the products to and what should we recommend? So let's zoom in. In the following two pages, I want to share my experience about the major data gap I was facing in each area. Each data gap will link to a business question, which we were trying to solve. The business question, on the other hand, show why this data gap is crucial and need to be solved. Uh, then I will um, provide some solution and hacks we were using for minimize the gaps for the inspiration. Let's see unbalanced customer group challenge first. We have three biggest issue, gender, age group, and the shopping variety imbalance. Not like data quality issue, this imbalance challenge is more subtle and hard to detect until we see some really weird recommendation example, such as recommend our male member of force eyelash or recommend anti-aging cream to young girls. Here, the first two problems are easy to understand from name, gender. Some of our company have majority member are female. However, the male customer become more and more important and grow rapidly. So with not enough male member purchasing data, how the recommendation system could support the company to take care of male uh, members. In some of our business, our average customer age is a little bit senior especially for our most valuable golden customer. However, the customer also want to be more close to the young people and create a young image of the brand. And then without enough record, how should the company provide relevant recommendation to attract more young generation? And uh, the shopping variety here, uh, what we mean is uh, the number of type of the product for each customer buy. If a customer have low shopping variety, which means the customer only buy certain type or only few type of products, then or um, like perfume only or toilet paper only, which means this customer's basket is really narrow with this, within this basket, there are not enough data point for machine to calculate or say create widen connection to other product, which means for the new customer or the customer by single type of product who need the most support from recommendation to widen the purchase scope will have the least support from the 
recommendation. So how we uh, solve this? Uh, for the gender issue, we try to tag the product as a male or man product, either use the name string or use the people to manually tag. At the same time, we're not satisfied with the result. We actually create a separate machine for the recommendation. For the age uh, imbalance, we try to over example young customers record. At the same time, tag the product most usually for young people as a young product. And then we add an extra layer on top of the recommendation system as a rule layer. We're able to add more weight to this young product. The last one is a little bit related to the fundamental problem with the collaborative filtering. So as you know, like Netflix uh, movie ran ranking, you have the scale from one to five to uh, rating the film. And now here, we only use binary uh, instead of one to five, we only use one and zero as the input data to minimize the frequency impact to the recommendation training. At the same time, we're creating a filter to filter out those customers only have one type of product to buy uh, in order to reduce the skewness from the data set. For those excluded customer, we actually use the cluster segmentation and use the most popular product within the segment to recommend to those customer to, in order to get more inspiration instead of accuracy. Then let's move Sorry, on. Sorry, Celine, to... you have like 30 seconds. Yes. Uh, then uh, let's move on to unbalanced product. And we can see here we have non-sales product imbalance, seasonal product and shopping frequency imbalance. Uh, the thing we, we're doing here is uh, I would say I would love to mention the seasonal product because we cannot add the extra regression for collaborative filtering. Then we actually add the month feature to each product. We tag the product for most popular months and then add the time dimension into ranking system. So things time limitation. So what I mentioned here, of course, not including all the challenge you may face uh, and all the solutions, but try to share some experience from my experience. Hope you get some inspiration and thank you for your attention. Now it's time for question. Thank you so much, Celine. So we have around four minutes for questions or even less. Uh, so one question that I can see here is, uh, did oversampling give any results in practice? Sorry, I, I didn't get the question. Uh, did oversampling? that you were discussing uh, yes. gave any results in practice? Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, it depends on how, how much you oversampling. So if you double the size or triple the size, or even have like 50%, they give screw the data sets. So we see the result from the data sets is different. And also depend on the testing or how we want the data set looks like, uh, we have different percentage of the oversizing, uh, over uh, sampling. Thank you. Another question. Uh, so on recommender systems for male and female, uh, how does that deal with non-binary identifying persons? Mm, so so you, you talked about the separation or like the challenge between male and female in yes. your systems. Do you have any uh, specific solution for non-binary identifying persons? Uh, unfortunately, that one way we didn't cover, where we talk about even for uh, male, they sometimes could buy the female product, but in terms of cover 80% of the coverage, we actually exclude the long tail. So we didn't take care of those. Sorry. Thank you. It will be uh, improvement in future. Thank you. And then uh, last question. Can you explain separate machine for recommendation? I think you had the word in as a separate machine in your presentation. Uh, yes, because uh, what I mean separate machine is um, I, uh, we have a collaborative filtering machine only take in male data as a training and uh, output the result. And we have a machine only training um, female data and output the result. That's why I call it separate machine. Instead of use own machine, single machine to train both female and uh, male data. I 
we separate it to train and output. So you mean like a separate machine learning model, basically? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Celine, for your presentation. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for the questions.